Well, welcome back to Street Smart. If you are an athlete who competes in triathlons, other races, or a traveler who likes to visit national parks, or just a stock investor interested in startups, you're going to want to listen to our next guest. His name is David Alberga. He created Active Network, and this is a company that allows easy online registration for sporting events, national park visits, and you name it, a whole lot more. Uh, it's, his company, by the way, went public back in May, and the stock has gained almost 16% in a very tricky market. The S&P was down about 1%. He joined us now from San Diego. Dave, uh, how, do, how does it feel uh, that your stock is uh, is beating the market does it make you a little nervous monkey on your back you know i i've i've, I've had a monkey on my back for the last 12 years so I, i'm it's just a different monkey uh I, you know I, I i'm actually really pleased i think we uh, i think we've got the right stockholders the stock has behaved really nicely in in what has been a really choppy market so i'm i'm actually very pleased all right describe the business just give people a sense for how it actually works and how you guys are making money Sure. We, uh, we build very sophisticated uh, cloud computing platforms that are used by organizers of activities and events around, around the country and around the world, for that matter. So it might be Little League Baseball. It might be the National Park Service using us for, for uh, campground reservations. Uh, it might be a triathlon or a marathon. And even uh, you know, companies like Cisco Systems are using us for their large conferences and conventions. Generally, we get paid on a per-participant basis uh, as the systems are used to register and manage participants for those events. So, David, you know, talk to me about retention. I mean, once you've got a customer, uh, once they start using it, do they stay with you or, or not? Yeah, we, we tend to have a pretty high retention rate. We, today, we have about 50,000 customers uh, from the standpoint of organizations that are using us, and we churn less than 5% of our revenue each year. Uh, so I, I, I think that puts us in a pretty elite class in, uh, in SaaS providers. What's really interesting about the business is that we've coupled it with online, really big online media communities uh, of participants, people who are interested in these types of activities. And so not only are the organizers using us, but participants are using us on a, on a daily and weekly basis to find the things they want to engage in to lead, you know, to lead a, a more enriching life. So David, you know, who do you see then as your, your competition? Who do you kind of keep an eye on? I mean, are you worried about any Anybody out there in particular, whether it's, I don't know, whether it's Facebook or some other online entity, is there somebody you're kind of keeping a, a close watch on? Yeah, you know, I, I, I worry all the time. That's kind of my, it's kind of my, uh, it's kind of my MO. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but, you know, to be honest, there's really not someone else doing exactly what we're doing across the multiple verticals in which we operate, and there's really no one at the scale in which, uh, in which we operate. That said, uh, we have competitors, small competitors, many of which are subscale in each of the sub-verticals in which we operate. And they tend to make they tend to make good products, and uh, and they're 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 uh, you know viable competitors within each of those small sub segments. And we have to we have to both take advantages of the fact that we are a large company with resources that they don't have, but also be careful that we're not losing our relevancy and our authenticity at each of the at each of the vertical levels. Now, Dave, you talk about the differences between being public and private. Uh, what's it like as a CEO? Is it harder for you now being a CEO of a public company? You know, I'm not sure it's become harder yet. Obviously, we're just out of our uh, out of our uh, dark uh, period, or out of our out, out of our um, period in which we can't talk to the press. And so, um, I, I wouldn't say it's harder. I, you know, I took my responsibility to our private shareholders really, really seriously, and um, and now I've just swapped that for a larger, another set of shareholders to whom I owe I owe return. Right. So. Uh, to me, I, I'm not sure things have dramatically changed that much. Hey, you know, we talk about uh, the investors uh, that you guys have been involved in, Walt Disney's ESPN, Barry Diller's IAC Interactive. I mean, how much input do you get from those guys? Does that kind of add to some of the stress, or is that a lot of help here? No, you know, to be, uh, to be, to very, be very candid, both, uh, both Barry's organization and the ESPN organization have been incredibly supportive of the business and very helpful in th helping us think through strategic issues and where, we should, where the company should move. So I wouldn't say it's added to the stress. I think they've given us some stability over the years during times when, uh, when particularly, you know, remember, we, we've been going since 98. And so they, they lent us some stability during times when, uh, when in, in the first downturn that we went through. Um, and that was very, very helpful. And they've been incredibly supportive since then. Well, Dave Alberga, thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your perspective. And it's uh, certainly interesting to hear what it's like to go public in this market. Thanks for having me, guys. It's really, uh, I really appreciate it. Okay, we'll see you next time. All right.